In this exercise, we're going to create a word jumble. This is going to combine what you're learning to do with lists, as well as what we did last chapter in strings, and add a random element to make a game. We're going to use the random features from Python, which is a library. So you need to import random, and that's our first statement in Python. You're going to create your own of these with a couple of changes. One change is that you will make a list of something other than dogs that has at least 15 words in it. This is a short list, but it will show you how the project works. So I'm creating a list of words. They're all breeds of dogs, and they're all set to capital letters. That makes it easier for me to compare, compare when I import letters from the user. If you want to read up on the different options for random, you can go to my reference, which is docs.python.org, python2, library random.html. But what we're going to do is we're going to randomly select one element from this list. So I've got a variable named selection, which is equal to random choice dogs. And for this hypothetical game that we're going to play where I walk through the logic, we're going to say that I've selected Bulldog randomly from the list. I'm setting answer equal to selection because I'm going to need to have this as a string to compare later. And this is something we will keep working with. Then I take a jumble equal to the list of selection, which converts the string Bulldog into a list named jumble. So if I run this through, and I'll just uncheck that there, we, we will see what it randomly picks. So it would, would change it into Kali, each item as a, a character in a list, and then it's going to scramble them. So I leave these print statements in here showing you how I'm testing things. So the next step is to scramble the letters in the jumble. I'm doing a shuffle, and so I'm going to do a for loop, and I'm doing it by the index number. So I'm looking for the number in the range for the length of the jumble. So this will change depending on which word we're going to use. I'm going to show you how it would work with the word bulldog, and we'll look at the code here. So we're for current index in range length of jumble. We're going to have random index equals random range zero through length of jumble. And then we're going to set something equal to temp, and we're going to rotate these. Let's take a quick look at how this would work. So the, my first time through, current index is equal to zero. This is my first time through. And we'll just add that to dictionary and add that to dictionary so it's less distracting. Okay, so I have my current index set to zero. Right now, the value in my current index is B. So we're going to make that red because it's the current index. We're going to select a random index And these may repeat because it's random, but I'm just going to say randomly my index is equal to 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my selected index. I'm just going to make the, that have a background of yellow. Current index, random index. So I'm going to make temp equal the jumble at the current index. So that would be B, because that's what's right here. The jumble at the current index, which would be, and I'm just going to start making the swap here, I'm going to set the current index equal to what's in 4. So these are going to switch place. So B is going to become D, and D is going to become B. So we're switching, so what's at the current index equals what's at the random index. Random index equals temp. 
which is what's here. So we switch those and all of the other letters are the same. So the next time we go through, we're going to be working with this index. I'm just going to highlight them both. And we'll say that we choose a random index of 3. So again, using that temp storage, Not what I'm about to do. Using that temp storage, we've switched so one becomes three, and three becomes what's in the spot of one. So we've shuffled the letters again. So we have D L L. That doesn't change. B O G. So let's say we're on the next time through, we're going to take the letter or the number two, which is L, and we're going to swap it with, we'll pick the number one. So L is going to stay here and that's going to stay here. Nothing's going to appear to happen because we've just swapped two L's. So those two swapped. Next time through, we're on number three. Let's just put these all back the same. So we're on number three, and the random generated number this time is zero. So U and D will switch. So this will become U. That'll stay the same, that'll stay the same, that'll become D, B, O, and G. This time we're on number four. We're going to say the random one selected is six. So this will become G. This will become B. And all the other numbers or letters stay the same. All right, so we're on five. And we're going to say that we're randomly switching with number two. So five is going to become L. Two is going to become O and the other letters will stay the same. And then we're finally on six, and this is our last pass through, and we're gonna randomly pick three. So this is going to become D, this is going to become B, and the others will stay the same. So once we've shuffled everything, this is our word jumble that will appear to the person who has to unscramble it to get Bulldog. We've just shuffled all of the letters in the list. And that's a common way to do games. So that's what that does. We're going to print this jumbled word by doing print letter comma. It will print each letter in the jumble next to each other. So let's try running this and you'll see what it does. Let's go back up here and run. So this gives me the jumbled word and I'm going to guess. Now I'm putting mine in lowercase. You'll notice here that it's getting my raw input on a new line and it's going to take my guess and change it to uppercase. And then it will compare it to the answer. If I got it right, it will print got it. Otherwise, it'll print the answer. So I'm going to play it again and get it wrong. That's not even particularly jumbled. Bulldog. So you're going to make a couple changes. If they guess it wrong, I want you to use a while loop or rec recursive function to have them keep guessing until they get it. I also want you to change the list so that something other than dogs and at least 
15 words long and change your prompts to be appropriate. The rest of the stuff will pretty much stay the same. You're going to do a similar but not identical exercise where you put together a list of random answers for like a magic eight ball or fortune teller and it doesn't matter what question the user asks you're going to give them back a random response something like check again later the world may never know whatever you want to be it's going to be your magic eight ball game 